person but, but shot. Okay, but what is, <laughs> how often does that happen? What is Remember, the this statistics? person in shot said they found out at 25 weeks. Do you think they should be able to get an abortion at 25 weeks? Um, abortion happens at less than 13 weeks. Oh, oh okay. So, so now you have a specific time frame. Okay, so let's go based upon that. What specific traits give us rights at 13 weeks? Uh, is when you're able to de detect... Um, well, I know that brain or neural activity um, develop or neural development begins, I believe, at six weeks. Um, and if I'm wrong, correct me. Um, yeah, uh, I can correct heartbeat. you. So the only thing that's present between like the first and second trimester is neurons firing. There's no actual activity present. Neurons firing. So yeah, that just it's just it's neurons and actually, synapses they're... firing. You know, yeah, brain dead so... people have neurons and synapses firing. That does it's not the same as actual cognition and brain activity. Exactly. So we're talking about conscious experience or sentience. So like, okay. So would you would so, you what would you value like trait wise then? Is it just the neurons firing for rights to begin? Yeah. yeah. Um, I actually would say, and this is. I'm going to go with this. I'm going to do 10 weeks. Um, just say, give a specific. Um, Why 10 so weeks? you're okay with the abortion pill then? Because it only works up to about 77 days. I mean, if you don't want a child, you want to take, you know, contrac or you want to take a morning after pill or whatever. No, not easy. plan B, the abortion pill. That's, that's totally up to you. Then it up to the next person. So you're pro-choice to an extent? You're pro-abortion pill? To an pill? extent. To an extent. Hmm. Okay. What? At least that's a start, right? Yeah. So again, like what start. traits? What traits gives us rights? I what feel traits? like I've had the sneaking suspicion that this is truth over tea, but now I don't. <laughs> How about this, Grim Reaper? I have a question. How do you make? Yes. Doesn't sound familiar? Between... Sorry. Do what? How do you make a distinction between conjoined twins? distinction from conjoined twins yeah do you think that they're the same person okay so there was actually a couple um i forgot i know one was ashley i believe or something along those lines they they're two sisters their bodies conjoined together and i saw i mean they made headlines um they're not they the same person right well same body but they have different personalities uh, oh. Exactly. So, do you think they're two different people? Yes. Okay. So, how do you think they're two different people? Is it because of their conscious experience, or is it because of their body or their DNA? Um, I think both. I'm gonna go with two with with the Why would it unique be DNA and then also their consciousness. Um, well, their DNA how or their like organs are saying that like they're the same person, right? But when we're talking about like conscious experience and different social identity, we can tell that like distinctly they're two different people. So that yes. just determines that you determine personhood based upon conscious experience. You don't you don't really do it just based upon like your organs, right? So like there's no meaningful distinction between conjoined twins if you don't make that um, argument. Right. And I So you, you fundamentally base rights and base that off of conscious experience. So why wouldn't you begin rights at conscious experience? So conscious experience, you would begin when the baby's born. No. If you want to no, go no, that 20, far. 24 weeks no. is in medical consensus, but we'd say 20 to 24. Okay. So that's where, but when I said that when rights begin is whenever you find out, or we'll say 10 weeks. But I, um, I don't think that's consistent at all. Because people can find out at significantly later times. So we want to base it off of something consistent. And what we see to be consistent is sentience or conscious experience. Okay. Also, so. I would like to point out that over half of abortions are done by the pill. So are you okay with half of abortions? Am I okay with it? Yeah, because you just said, you know, 10 I weeks mean, before I, I don't 13 like weeks. It. I don't like that so. it's a final or a only resolution to should it be legal w would you support free health care free health care like universal yep. health care yep it ain't free like countries i can tell you that it, it's yeah. definitely not going to be free that's for sure because somebody has to pay for it and it's not uh, not, not paid okay fine not paid at time of service yeah free at the point of service 
you know, like you don't pay for the fire department, you don't pay for the police department. Would you support healthcare in that kind of system? Oh, in that kind of system? Uh, possibly. What about uh, daycare? Daycare should be, it's, they're, they're very expensive for, for people who can't afford it, um, especially per day. And I believe that women. Well, they are, are they are very expensive for people who can afford it. Yeah. Well, for those who even who can or can't afford it, daycare services. Right. So I'm asking you, should there be subsidized daycare? Should it subs? Yes. Awesome. See, I kind of like. Uh, what the about paid maternity and paternity leave? Oh yeah, they have that already. Not in the U.S. anywhere near the same degree as European our country. Well, we, yeah, we don't have a but, universal, but, yeah. Well, right, but it would be best for women who end up getting pregnant and actually having to take time off. They do need to be paid for their time off. That I agree with, and that I would advocate for. Like, hey, you need to take care of right. your employee because of this. And they also do that for the father. They give him um, right. that time off to stay with his child or and with his wife at that time for however many weeks. I think it's like what, a month and a half? Six Someone weeks. Someone told me they got six weeks um off it, it depends. The US. Okay. So I actually had a buddy of mine. Yeah. He, it um, depends on the employee policy. But yeah. if you are for all those things, um, as well as for like sex health education K through twelve and public funding well, actually, of IUDs, I, other I, contraceptives and making hey, Okay, so sex education, I would actually start um, sixth grade all the way to the 12th. I wouldn't um, start K in through 12, like when we talk about kindergarten, it's not about sex itself. It's about family circles, what anatomical names of body parts are on. That can be another conversation. Yeah, good but touch, bad, everything touch. that I just covered uh, would actually be pragmatic policies that would actually reduce abortion. So if that's the outcome that you want, then that is what you should be advocating for. Okay. Yeah. And so, also, wait, can I say if you are, you said you're not okay with the pill per se, but you wouldn't want to make it inaccessible or illegal? What I'm saying is I don't want it to be the only solution. Sure. Like and it's the, not, but you well, wouldn't well, want to make it inaccessible. I, I wouldn't want it to be the first option. Okay. Um, you don't, do you want it inaccessible? Yes or no? I want it to be accessible if, and only if, She's not finan if she knows she's not financially stable. So you're pro choice. To a degree. I'm pro choice to a degree. You know, I'm kinda here for your character development. Yeah, that was the hard weird pivot. I don't know what to do right yeah, now. Yeah, I saw you debate Kenzie and you definitely did not say you were a little bit pro choice, but No, I've actually on other people's eyes I said, you know, I'm pro life, but I'm also um, pro-choice if that makes sense some of them said yes some of them said no and... <laughs> i mean it kind of doesn't but go off <laughs> what what is, right. what is so, uh, why, why do you not want to say you're pro-choice what why do you not want to say you're pro-choice no i when i've made my stance especially when it comes to pro-choice i said the women have a choice and for that for their choices that they can make that is on them. Like, I'm okay if a woman gets a piercing, a tattoo, body modifications, hair extensions, whatever she wants to do to her physical appearance on the outside of her body. That I'm good with. What, what about, about breast inside? augmentation? That, that's why I said body modifications. Any, anything. Well, that, that would be internal. With, well, I mean, you got to cut the outside in order to get to the inside. So... Um. Okay, go ahead. So, so that I'm okay with that. I could, you know, if a woman wants to do that, make herself look like a Barbie doll, that's on her. I mean, I'm all, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be all for it. If she wants to do it, fine. Right. You know, and, you know, at least, you know, I'm not doing all that stuff. So, um, really? You're not into that? No, I'm definitely not. Um, so, so, so where, where does this now change so when where, it comes to pregnancy? When it comes to pregnancy. Um, is the point where you find out that you are pregnant and that 
that that's where I find that's where I kind of draw the line is like until until then you have that choice but until you f- when you find out that you're pregnant I believe how long that's you when your choice or your right to your bodily autonomy 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 ends oh oh when it's involved when you find out there's another uh, I'll say since the unborn we call it a fetus but an unborn is in your womb that's when i draw the line other than that even prior to that when you don't know prior to that and you're taking um whatever you said um savani why why do pregnant women lose rights so what what do you say why do pregnant women lose rights in your mind why do pregnant women lose rights Mm -hmm. what rights have they lost the bodily right to autonomy. govern their own body. You just, you just said, said they lost bodily autonomy, bro. No, meaning that they have lost their right to uh, take an innocent life or an unborn life inside their womb. But you that's said what they I lose their right to, to, to cut off their resources and say you can't weeks. reside in my body without my consent. Are you uh, are you aware what the uh, number one cause of maternal death is in the United States? The number one cause? No. Yeah. It's a homicide. Homicide. Right. And, and what are the charges? Thirds, two thirds of uh, the homicide is related to domestic violence. So, right. if you were to restrict abortion access. You don't know what kind of situation you are putting someone in that can cost them their life. Okay. So what does domestic violence have to do with abortions? Many women can get abortions because they could die from their partner abusing them. Okay. And what's one in, the, one in six statistics? women who are abused actually started to get abused when they were pregnant. So it'd be one in six. So one in three is 33. One in five lowers the chance. One in six actually lowers the chance even more. Uh, I said one in six women who are abused. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Because so their one abuse six, began when they were chances, pregnant. The, the math that isn't math. chances lower itself. Not- you're, I, don't, I don't feel like you're, you're doing math right here. So that one in six statistic I just gave you was to show that pregnancy can even start abuse in a relationship the other statistic i gave you is of pregnant women who die 20 percent is related to homicide so so that's one in what one you, in five? who die correct so okay. my whole point is by restricting abortion access you don't know what kind of situation you're putting someone in that could cost them their life i.e their partner killing them because they are pregnant okay so what's the point here in all of that? Did, did you, was it not blatantly obvious? That so, some women choose that to save their own life. Right. So they choose that to save their own life, but not realize they have another life inside oh, of them. Oh, boy. Okay, so can you I'm establish sure they me do why realize this? that in any way. I'm sure they do realize that. What does that have to do with anything? The, what it has to do with, and one, I will say the domestic violence is actually very terrible uh, and should never, no man should ever raise his hand to a woman at all. I, I, I've never hit a woman in my life, nor will I ever, because I wasn't raised that way. Wow, um, bare if minimum. I, if I ever see a man do that, that's, he, he would definitely be eating, drinking through a straw, but that's neither here nor there. Um, and then also with that, one in five which is about 20%. Yes, that's a lot, actually. Um, 20% is too much. And then a lot. So when women... So choose, then again, if you want someone to choose life, then you can start donating to domestic violence shelters. You can, uh, again, promote sex ed K through 12 so that men don't turn to violence. Not only towards other men, which, which you just exhibited, but towards women as well. Yes. And for those who 
exhibit those type of behaviors, especially towards women. Um, in my opinion, they should be, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's a very hard subject for me to, to see that or even talk about because I've seen it happen in my own so, household with my family. I, 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 I'm, I'm very sorry to hear that. I'm uh, very it's, sorry it's to a, hear that. It's a very touchy my, my husband did as well. Um, and I, I know the uh, effects that I've seen from him that can and last it, with you. It, but sucks. what I'm trying to paint to you is that each individual person's circumstance in life is very individualized. It's like a snowflake. And for you to kind of cast this generalized net, you're just, you're not seeing the complexity of the situation for what it is. Okay. I, I can see what you're saying. Great. So. So why don't we respect people to make the best decisions for their own circumstances? Their own. Depending on the circumstance, and I'll and I'll make several exceptions. Um, one, uh, domestic violence, it would be one of them. S A or R. What if people don't want to come forward? What if people if, don't feel comfortable doing okay, so? Okay, so if if people don't feel comfortable coming forward, um, I actually saw this, and it was at a medical place. Um, they actually put up a sign that says, if you've been involved in, with domestic violence or you or whatever, they said, put, put this dot underneath your cup and, and, or whatever. And there was a total of three. I mean, I just seen it, happened to see it. And it was a total of three stickers were missing or whatever. So three people, I don't know if they were male or female, but if they were female, you know, I, hopefully they got the help that they need. Um, but in order to, I guess... If they did come forward, it would. It's hard because I don't. I don't really see them coming forward. But if if they are able to, I would. I don't know. I. I it's, it's so, so you don't really respect the right to bodily autonomy if they're willing to come forward. If they're willing to come forward. I would make an exception. Um, again, I, I don't think you really understand kind of like the, the mindset that someone who's experiencing domestic violence is in. Um, one of the first things that an abuser does is isolate their victim and then also create an environment where they think they can't survive without them. So for a victim to leave or even kind of, you know, break this spell for lack of a better term um, can require multiple tries over years. Uh, the average attempts for a victim to leave their abuser is five. Yo, Grim Reaper, can you okay. turn down your volume a little bit? There's a little bit of an echo. Yeah, I can turn it down. Oh, I think I'm like close to my phone. I think that's why. That could be it. Yeah. All right. Is that good? Um, I don't hear it anymore. Okay, awesome. I, I think it's because I backed away from the, the mic or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um. So I do understand um, what you're saying, and especially when it comes to certain, I guess, subjects um, that result in abortion. And I have, and I, I'm going to say this, and I don't like saying it, but I am going to say it not because of my pride. But I have to honestly say, and anybody who's watching this or whatever, I have to say all three of you have changed my mind. You're gonna make me to cry. really to really consider certain situations that women are involved in regarding what you just said, Miss Kinsey, domestic violence, SA, the G grape, um, and Savani. I hope I got your name right, Savani. Sanvi. Sanvi. Um, I really appreciate you coming into this like open minded um enough to change your mind. No, I, I will I will commend you on that. Very like bravo. I'm I'm glad that you've um at least started to make exceptions. Yeah. If, and I used to um, be you, like if your moral framework 
yeah go ahead zombie sorry oh sorry no, no, no i used to be like adamantly pro-life so i totally get it and like i do really like appreciate you like listening you know instead of just debating yeah and and i don't Absolutely. and i don't like getting upset at people because you know there's times where miss kenzie i have been upset at you um and i don't mean to be upset at you it's just like a very touchy subject for me because of what my mother went through and so i always use her story as like a reason why i'm against abortion um and all of that so that was the whole reason why like it's okay i do that too uh i upset a lot of men yeah well i don't and it takes a it and honestly it does take a lot to upset me it really does um but when it comes to certain situations or certain things that people try to make an exception for it's like okay hold on let me let me chime in because obviously i'm the product of grape and i'm the product of sa and you know my mother telling me that I'm a product of that, it does, it does bother me thinking, well, you know, since I'm a part of that, you know, why did, and, I, and there's, and there's times where I've asked myself, why did my mom keep me? And every time I would ask myself this, and, and this is what she tells me, I would ask myself this. And when I, my, when I talk to my mom, usually try to on a daily basis, I never asked her this, but what she had told, she would tell me time and time again is because she loved me. And she couldn't imagine her life without me in it. And, you know, every time I've asked, I've, I've asked myself that question, I've always heard her say that it's because she loved me. And yeah, that's your, mom, why. your mom was very strong. I, I really commend her. And, and it was because when she said she couldn't imagine her life without me, it meant a lot to me. Now, I mean, I, I'm a grown man. I'm like, I, I'm not saying I'm not sensitive. Cause I am, I mean, there's, there's parts of me where, you know, I talk about certain things and it does trigger those emotions, I guess. And I, I don't know. It's Graham. Graham, can I ask you a question? Yeah, go ahead. Does it make you feel better that your mom chose you that she yes, chose to have you rather than that she was forced to? Yes. It, it right. makes me, it makes me more, I guess, every day more excited because I'm able to make a difference, not just in her life. I mean, mm-hmm. how I talk to my mom is probably completely different than how everybody else talks to their mom. You know, now that I'm grown, my mom is my best friend. But when I'm at her house, I'm her son. Like, there's a difference. Like, her house, her rules, I abide by them, even if I'm a grown man. I still have to listen to my mom. Um, but when her and I, we've sat down, we've had this discussion, we've actually talked about it. She even told me she contemplated abortion. She, she contemplated it. But because she saw the life inside of her womb, she couldn't bring herself to it. So, so she was I like, hope, you know, I hope I that it has meaning for you that she did choose you because, um, well, I'm not the product of, uh, grape. Um, I was definitely an unplanned pregnancy and, um, I'm sure you and I can both agree that we understand like the actual value of being, having a parent who wanted us. Mm -hmm. And so that's why, well, my mom told me she almost aborted me because it was, never mind. So, but like I said, you, you guys have changed my mind. I see that certain things. Um, and so that that that's why I I got upset several times because you know those things that when people say well a woman's body her her body her choice yes to an to an extent and then realizing that there are certain situations that require I guess an abortion those are the exceptions that I will make. Uh, I, I, if you still kind of have ethical qualms, um, I would rec- recommend reading the book, uh, The Ethics of Killing. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it is an expensive book and it does read like a textbook, so it might put you to sleep. But um, there's a lot of great points in there that I think you could derive from. But Grim, I, I hope that kind of when you focus on this issue, that for me, the reason I'm so passionate about it is because I want children to be wanted. And even though you were, you know... Uh, conceived out of a very uh undesirable action you were still wanted 
and yeah. and that's what where, where the meaning is. Right, and and so that's that was the whole, I guess, the whole premise of me being upset was like, you know, I, I feel like those, the I guess the unborn, I feel like they weren't wanted, and that's why I got upset. It was like, you know, you're acting like they're not wanted anymore. You're acting, you know, and then and then when it comes to let's see the adoption, you know, it's like you're you're making them feel like they're not wanted, even though they've already. The, even though they already feel unwanted already. And so I do, I, I understand your point. And I understand what you're conveying to me and that book. Can you send me uh, a direct message with, with the name of the book so I can actually look it up myself and read it? Yeah, for sure. Um, I'll, uh, I'll send you a picture. Well, yeah, I'll send you the book. So that's, that was the whole, and someone said it's the whole point of uh, being wanted. You know, the woman's got to want the child and, um, or want to be pregnant. Let's just, I'm going to put it that way. She'd want to be pregnant. Um, so that's, well, the whole, I mean, just want the child. Like my, my yeah. son wasn't planned either, but you know, when we found out we were pregnant, um, you know, while we were scared, we were thrilled. Uh, so like if you and I can get on that same page, then, you know, I, I, I'm not sure if you're aware, but 47% of people who have abortions actually do want to parent the child. They just don't feel they have the socioeconomic status in order to do so. Right. So I can see where you're coming from on uh, a lot of people feel that their only option is abortion. Yeah. And if you want to expand it to give them more options, I, I'm completely on that on that plan, which is why I support all of those policies that we talked about. Right. And, and, you know, I got like what you've pointed out, certain situations called for certain measures. Um, and we've agreed on it. And so, like, like I said, I mean, I've already, my mind has been changed enough to agree on your viewpoint and what your stance is. So, yeah, Graham, I absolutely commend you for that. Not many people can like actually like go into conversations and like look to grow from them. It's actually very good. Well, I know. I mean, I'm it, shocked. Zombies taken, here. Like, <laughs> it, it's taken. A, it's taken a little bit. So that's why. I'm yeah. Saying, after it was overturned and stuff, I was like, you know, so I was like, man, you know, finally, you know. But then, even though over the last, I would say in the last maybe, uh, see what is today's the eighth. So let's see, six the thirtieth. That's six days, eight days. That's what fourteen. Yeah, fourteen days. It's taken nearly two weeks for my mind to be changed on this subject. And two, I, I mean, to me, two weeks seemed like a long time, but actually, it it went by really quick. Yeah. Um, so again, two weeks gave me enough time, especially today, gave me enough time to really realize the standpoint and what people take and what they're actually advocating for and not what they're actually advocating against. And that's what you have, all of you have conveyed, that you're not really against certain things. It's just you wanting want it to be more available for those type of situations. Yeah, uh, I will tell you, Graham, I am someone who's had an abortion, and I certainly don't want anyone to have to make that choice. Um, but I can see how not having it accessible really weaponizes pregnancy against women. And I don't want to do that. So, again, like if I, I would love to see abortion rates drop. Mm -hmm. uh, and really create a society where, you know, parenthood and, and families can thrive and uh, really, you know, it can be a, it can be a choice for a lot of people. It can be an option. Yeah. And, and I'm, and I'm going to agree with you on that. It, it has to be, an, it, there, there must be an option for women. Um, Absolutely. But, I, but, but I, but I would say this and, and, an abortion should be the last thing the last resort, not just the first um, option. I, I believe, you know, if you're using contraceptions correctly, like what I found 99% of the time should be effective, then I believe you're fine. Um, I mean, I on mean, the off chance it does happen, which 51% of abortions actually result from like failed contraceptives. So 
it does happen even with contraceptives. So yeah, like, what we're doing here is not 100%, right? And we have to yeah. acknowledge that when it comes to like people who are put in these certain circumstances where their contraceptives are failing. Yeah. And, and, um, and someone even said, it says it depends on the contraception. Yes. It kind of depends on. It, yeah, it does. Um, and, and you are correct. There is a lot of user error, especially when it comes to the pill and condoms. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you're interested, there was a policy put in place in Colorado called LARC, which stands for long acting reversible contraceptives, uh, where IUDs were available to women aged 16 through 21 uh, without parental consent or involvement. And uh, it reduced teen pregnancy rates by 66% and reduced abortion by 44% and actually saved the Colorado state government uh, $69 million. Yeah, well, that's a lot. That's a lot of money to be saved. So, so um, yeah, I would also uh, support, you know, obviously uh, more effective birth control uh, available to people. Um, I personally have an IUD as well. And um, it was expensive. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't, I don't know what, uh, I mean, I've seen this, some of the, the statistics on contraceptions, especially IUDs, um, and a form of others, like there's, uh, a, a crap load of stuff that I, I looked at. I was like, well, I've never seen this before. I've only heard of, you know, the IUDs and, and that's it. Like never anything beyond that. So, um, but yeah, if you I can send, send you the, stuff, uh, yeah, I already followed you. If you want to follow me back, I can send you the, uh, the Lark site as well from Colorado. So you can look at that. Yeah. And will, um, or Parker, I followed you and Savani, I'm going to follow you. So Sambi, trying to get it right. I'm gonna follow you <laughs> as well. You. Uh, and like I said, it only took two weeks to get me to this point and to really realize what am I trying to, am I trying to convince others or am I trying to convince myself? And I believe it was me trying to convince myself um, that I'm pro-life. And yeah, I think yeah, I've that's made, some insight made, there. Made like, that, wow, good for you. That like made that turn, I guess, to really say that I, I mean, I'm still on the fence with pro-life and, and pro-choice. I'm going to say that I'm on the fence, but I believe I'm going to probably be more leaning towards pro-choice and probably in the next however long, um, depending on what I research, what I read, and it'll, it'll help me determine whether or not that I can actually fully be pro-choice. So I'm not me tearing up. No, I'm, 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 I'm sorry. I'm not. It trying. just like literally like reminds me of myself. No, you're good. Like Graham, I don't know if you how long you've been doing this, but I used to be like really, really adamantly pro life. Oh, I've been doing. I was doing it like uh, so uh, much since I was 17. I've been advocating for pro life since I was 17. Um, but yeah, a, and it's not I mean, like you have bad intentions. It's just you know. I guess it. I guess it was just. It's just for everybody else's situation. Yes, that can result in changes. I guess, and the fact that how, I would say this live, it kind of got a little crazy, but then it started calming down. And I'm not trying to be religion to this, but when it when the Bible says a soft answer turns away wrath, that's actually what it did. Your soft answers or you explaining certain things in a way that was calming, that wasn't like yelling, that wasn't just like, oh, well, I'm just going to call them names because of, of this, this, and this. It actually helped calm me down because I, because literally when I talk about this stuff, my adrenaline pumps, like I can feel it. But then after a while, I started calming down and understanding the position that all three of you were taking. And I was, I guess the blinders were coming off or the scales were coming off of my eyes to the point to where I can actually see the position that you were taking and that you're actually allowing women, or I would say not allowing, but I would say that you're for the right for a woman to have access to these things and not just make it like a political type of thing, but you're making it to where, okay, I know 
that women are going through this on a daily basis and they should have access to these certain things. And there are certain situations or certain circumstances that cause for an abortion. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Again, bravo you. I think uh, empathy and compassion is one of the most beautiful traits someone can have. And I'm, I, I'm very I, glad I to see. I also think that's one of the things that I'm still working on is empathy and compassion. Um, there's, I mean, I'm not saying I don't have compassion, but I think it's just compassion for certain things that I need to work on as a person. And I believe that you guys helped me kind of see that, that I need to be more compassionate, to be more understanding, to be willing to open up my ears and shut my mouth and really listen to certain things or certain issues that are being talked about so that I can have an understanding and really come away with some knowledge and having certain things convey to me in a way that, that only um, – because there's things where I, I talk about, I just keep going on and on without really realizing, okay, I'm, sometimes I might contradict myself, and I've heard myself do that um, a few times. And so with that, it does help me to see that the more that I listen and the less that I talk, the more I'm able – to understand other people's viewpoint or other people's stances based on why they believe that way. Absolutely. And uh, I'm so happy that you were open and willing to like come and look for these arguments. And, and uh, I, I think this was noble. good. I think this was a good way for, for me to kind of, I guess, get some healing. I'm going to say that um, it's, it's weird, but, for me to actually come on and actually kind of open up on why I was so passionate about uh, pro-life and bringing my kind of sharing my mom's situation. It actually helped me kind of heal a little bit inside. I was like, you know what? I, my mom wanted me, you know, I feel sorry. I feel sad for the kids that for their parents didn't want them. And, and I feel horrible that, you know, that I'm not like one of those people with millions of dollars. Like, Hey, you know, what? I'm going to build a big giant house on a big old giant property and, have all these kids come, you know, I don't care, you know, but I know that on my part, the ones that feel unwanted, I can make them feel wanted by encouraging them that they can do things in their life that, that maybe other people said that they couldn't do. And that gives me an opportunity to tell them that they are great, that they can do anything that they want to do, whatever they set their mind to. That helps me uh, realize that and you guys help me so are you reading the chat Grim? yeah I, I have uh, read the chat and I appreciate everybody um, especially the coins I, I, I mean I'm not on it for the, the likes the, you know, the coins and all that stuff I'm, I'm not really on it for that um, and really you got a lot my, of people here supporting it yeah and, and I appreciate it I really do um I was really on this app to really expose the, the corruption of the government and things like that. That's what I was really on for. I didn't, everything else wasn't, was kind of second to none to what I was really on the app for. Mm -hmm. But like I said today, it, it helped open up my eyes genuinely. I'm not just trying to say it to give you word salad or nothing, but genuinely. Um, so I appreciate everybody uh, actually commending me i'm not just doing like i said i'm not doing it for likes i don't do it for for all this stuff i'm doing it because you know for me i hate the way our government is treating the american people and on the last live i was on they said if we just come together as one and unite as one and come to a common ground common come to a common census that understand that what our common enemy is it's not each other but it's our government we can beat them at their own game. And I, I mean, it all starts with, you know, not fighting with each other based on what we believe, regardless of what, where we stand, regardless of what religion we're from or whatever that, have, that that's, I think it's also another reason why I'm passionate about certain things is because, you know, if we all can just come together as one, regardless of what you believe, then I think 
that we can stop the fighting, stop the bickering, stop all this nonsense, then we can actually thrive and become a better, like have like what they say in movies, have a better tomorrow. So. I agree. Yeah, I think I conversations am. like this are like the very like fundamental basis to like allowing ourselves to progress in society. I agree. And I, I hope you know that um, the way you were conceived does not take away the value you are as a person. Yeah. I, and I appreciate that. I really do. In, in For your, sure. I don't know. Like, I guess being part of several lives um, have kind of stopped me from being. I can't hear him. Yeah, the grim <laughs> more. Um, oh, can you hear me? Can we now? hear you now. Yeah, we can hear you now. Okay. All right. So, instead of me being upset over something that that I have no control of as an individual, then I can help somebody in return. Maybe have an, who doesn't have access to get, help them have access to certain things. I guess. Um, instead of saying, no, you don't need that access, I can actually maybe make a difference and help somebody. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I I could never imagine being, uh, the child of, of grape. So I, I don't know, like, I'm sure there, there must be like support groups for that. Cause I'm sure, um, a lot of people struggle. Yeah. And, you know, I actually don't have a whole lot of people I talk to about this stuff um, because it is a very sensitive subject for myself. So. I'm glad that you felt comfortable enough to do so. Yeah, me too. Especially it on like a helped. public platform. Men a yeah. lot of the times just internalize their emotions, don't feel like they can sort of like project them in like an online space. So I think it's good, especially for like showing other people that they can as well. Yeah. And so I appreciate you guys, you know, having me on. And really, and Parker, I appreciate you. Of course, we're always here. Oh, did he cut out? um, I'm going to get off here and I'm going to head home. So, all right. uh, It was great talking to you. Thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate it. Yeah. It was very productive. Yeah, for sure. Have a great day. Today's been like really good for like people coming on. We've had like a lot of good conversations today. All right, let me get someone else. Um, man, I I would not have guessed that Grim yeah, would me either. Have it. Um. Yeah. What a is day. Sandy uh, still there? Yes, Sandy, are you there? He changed his bio to pro choice. That's amazing. No, it doesn't. Wait, um, it says, "Yeah, we can hear you now." It says things that I hate. And one, um, it, so one is abortionist, parentheses, pro choice. <laughs> but do you ever like uh, have a this. moment, like Parker, where you're like, this is why I do this? Yes, literally and, all like, the time. But like, I, I feel like I can't like show people that. It's like, it's hard to express that.